Welcome back. Tonight I'm going to take a break from the Hugo and Nebula Award winning Shed Ladder that we've got going on this channel where I've been ranking all those wonderful novels. But I'm not going to dismiss the Hugos altogether because I'm going to go back to the 1977 Hugo Award winning novelist in Kate Wilhelm. When I reviewed Where Late the Sweet Birds Sang on this channel a month or so back, I mentioned that I was really taken by her writing. Kate, I think, is just a wonderful writer, and she had some really interesting ideas in Where Late the Sweet Birds Sang. And I said in that review that I've been neglecting Kate for, su for some time, so I went out and bought several of her books. Uh, and tonight, I want to review one of those books in The Killing Thing. So this novel is, was written in 1967. And it's an interesting novel. It's more or less a novella. It's only 142 odd pages. Um, but it's interesting. It's an interesting novel, and one that I think a bit of historical uh, context may help appreciate this novel just a little bit more. So it, this novel was written pretty much at the peak of the anti-war feelings that were going on during the Vietnam War uh, in 1967. So in 1967, it was one of the very first national um, protests that happened, uh, anti-war protests in America. And so this novel was written during that time, right, where there was a lot of questioning as to why was America involved in this war and how did we get our troops home. Uh, and this novel sort of talks to some of those fears, um, and some of the, uh, it's almost a protest novel in some ways, but it sort of talks to that. So, so the premise of the book, you have this Captain Tracy, or Captain Trace rather, this guy who's um, just crash landed on this alien planet, it's a desert planet, and Kate does this brilliant job of really describing the barrenness and remoteness of this planet and the harsh conditions on the planet. And they've crashed there because they've been chased and they've been chasing this killer robot. So this novel talks straight into those golden age pop fiction magazine robots with killer laser beam eyes that can shoot you down from two miles away. <laughs> so this novel sort of talks right to those what are now considered pretty much cliches. Um, so that yeah, it's a, this Captain Trace guy, he crash lands with his um, with his comrade in a guy called Duncan and they sort of crash on this planet and they're trying to get away from this killer robot and we find that Duncan actually dies as he um, approaches the planet as they crash into the planet and we learn this through some whole lot of flashbacks and what we learn during those flashbacks is what led Trace to this point in time how he came to be on this planet so it gives a bit of his backstory uh, by using these flashbacks but we also get a sense of what the robot is all about and why he's got this killer instinct uh, because it talks to some of his backstory in these flashbacks as well so i thought the mix of you know back and forth was it was decent enough i enjoyed the flashbacks i do feel some people might be a bit put off by some of the flashbacks that do come quite often in the novel but I personally enjoyed them. I thought the flashbacks were better than the actual current affairs that were happening in the novel. So they're landing on this novel, and really the novel is this cat and mouse game between Trace and this killer robot. And what we learn is that the killer robot has been programmed by this guy called Dr. What was his name? Dr. Vianti, who was basically this person on a, on a remote settlement planet. And Earth has got this mentality that the earthlings are the supreme beings of the galaxy and everyone we need to come across needs to you know succumb to us and, and so this scientist this dr vianti uh, his name was i'm pretty sure it was vianti or vianchi something like that i didn't commit him to memory um he's improved on this robot that is an earth robot but he's improved it he's programmed it uh with three distinct characteristics uh, the number one objective was that he had to follow the, the the first goal. So whatever goal was programmed into the robot, the robot had to go and fulfill that goal. Um, but he then proceeded to program a secondary goal, which was self-preservation. So in lieu of the first goal, the robot's prime objective would then to self-preserve, so self-preservation. And the third thing that he programmed into this robot was the ability to learn from its past actions and behaviors, right? And that ultimately plays a, a pretty big part in the novel. So yeah, the story goes back and forth and we find that, you know, Trace is running away from this robot 
and what we learn through Tracer's backstory as well that he, in some ways he's been programmed in quite the same way through the militarization of Earth, right? So it's an interesting concept where we have this robot who's been programmed to do these particular things and he comes to, and as he's learning, he comes to a decision that basically means, hey, I'm going to get rid of all mankind, right? <laughs> all mankind is considered an enemy. And in many ways, we have Trace who has, through learning and through all these doctrines that have been indoctrinated in him, has come to the point where, you know, humanity is number one and everything else is pretty much worthy of being killed or if they don't succumb to us, right? So it's an interesting novel. Look, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But needless to say, there's a final confrontation between the robot and Trace. And it really comes, and the question really asked uh, in the novel in some ways is, can we overcome our programming, right? So can a robot or an artificial intelligence overcome its programming? And or can man overcome his programming, right? So it's an interesting novel in that sense. So what did I like about the book? I like the concept. I like that concept where we have this artificial intelligence who's able to self-learn, who's able to uh, decipher based on his surroundings and the inputs around his surroundings, a course of action. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting concept in the novel considering the rise of artificial intelligence and machine learning and all the advances in that bit of technology. And I remember reading through the book thinking, yeah, you know, sometimes we really need to be careful <laughs> how we utilize technology and just make sure that we're foreseeing where this te technology may take us because it may be at a point where it may go too far. So I thought it was an interesting concept. I did like the, the concept of that artificial intelligence. The other thing I really enjoyed in the novel as well, it really has this pulp fiction element to it. It's very reminiscent for me to the likes of Harry Harrison um, that I've talked about in the past on this channel. Um, Robert Heinlein, there's flavors of Robert Heinlein in this as well. So I did enjoy that robot, um, you know, laser beam, lo robotic eyes, out to kill you sort of pulp fiction elements of the novel. Which also takes me to some of the things that I didn't like in the novel, which is that robot, laser beam, out to kill you <laughs> type of stuff. So I, I was sort of sitting on the fence. Part of me enjoys that Pulp Fiction element and, you know, the sort of Harry Harrison type style of novel. Um, yeah, and the other part of me thought, yeah, this... I would have liked to have seen, I guess, a little bit more of a personality of Trace himself and the robot, uh, you know, multifaceted aspects of it. Um, I can understand the robot being very single-minded in his approach. I mean, he was a robotic artificial intelligence. So the robot sort of made sense. And look, and in hindsight, uh, I think the criticism I was initially going to talk about in Trace being very one-minded, very set in his ways, is probably fair enough, actually, given what um, the novel was out to achieve, where you know, man can be programmed just as much as machine and we're subject to that programming and sometimes we need to break away from that. So I think, yeah, in, in hindsight, I wouldn't necessarily call it a negative, but it was a very single-sided view of these characters. And look, and given it's, like I said, it's really just a novella format, uh, I can appreciate the characters not being quite as developed as you'd uh, expect them to be in what otherwise would be a full-size novel. So yeah, look, uh, Kate Wilhelm's recommendations. I've hinted on the fact that I think if you like novels written by Harry Harrison, especially the Death World series that I've been reviewing on this channel as well, um, I think there's elements in uh, Kate Wilhelm's writing here that were reminiscent, <laughs> is reminiscent of Harry Harrison and that whole Death World saga. Um, I, I think if you enjoyed We're Late the Sweet Birds Sang, I would say it's a very, very different novel, right? That that novel really talked to humanity and talked to science and science experiments. It didn't really talk to this sort of pulp fiction alien themes. Um, I mean, you're talking spaceships, you're talking rockets, you're talking laser beam robots, right? It's very science fiction, pulp fiction elements in the novel. So if you are a Kate Wilhelm fan, because of We're Late the Sweet Bird Sang, I would say, you know, tread carefully. It's not a similar novel at all. Um, it has some very interesting concepts, like I said, a very thought-provoking question in there. Uh, and I think when 
approached with the view, hey, you know, this novel was written in 1967. There was a lot of anti-war sentiments going on. And you read that with what almost is a, a reflection on the times uh, in what is almost an anti-war protest book. I think that element adds to the enjoyment, at least that I had following this novel. Sometimes, look, and let me, I guess, make that recommendation if I can. Sometimes when picking up, especially some of these vintage novels, I typically have a look at what year these novels were written in. So like this was written or published in 1967. So I typically start by saying, well, what happened in 1966? What are some of the current things, that you know, current affairs of 1966? What are some of the things that happened in 1967 that maybe give me an indication as to where was uh, the author's mindset at during the writing of this novel? And I found that for me, has given me further insights into some of these vintage novels where they do ask a question that unless you're sort of familiar with the times or you do just that you know that one or two minute research um, you may not potentially pick up on straight away and the way i typically do that like it literally is just a two minute search i normally go onto your favorite search engine and i type in 1966 1967 what happened right or major major circumstances or whatever right? any kind of google search or whatever engine you prefer what what are the main um things that happened during that year period and you don't even have to go far and you get you know top 10 top 20 things that happened during that time period so look i hope that helps a little in enjoying some of these classic vintage science fiction novels um we're not going to rank it it didn't it never won a hugo or a nebula award winning novel so we're not going to do a traditional hugo ranking system but i would give this novel a three to three and a half out of five stars books um i wouldn't say it's the best kate wilhelm book that i've read uh, and i did a bit of quick googling around to see you know what and how does this book rate with some of other of Kate Wilhelm's novels? And it's sort of, uh, you know, it's sort of towards the bottom of her works. But I still think it was a really enjoyable read. It was just a very quick read. I think I read it in like a day and a half or so over a weekend. And it, uh, it, it flowed nicely. Like I said, an interesting concept and a fun book. Hey, I've been Peter. This has been The Sci-Fi Shed. If you've noticed any books in the shelf behind me that sort of picture your interest and you want to take a look at what that is or you have a particular preference, if you can see these books behind me, say, hey, Pete, what are your thoughts on this one? I'd be happy to pick one up and uh, do a thorough review for you as well. Like always, thank you for joining me in the shed and I'll see you next time in the shed.